Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we have a beer that should be really quite interesting. It's half Norwegian, half American. So the American side of this beer is Against the Grain Brewery from Louisville in Kentucky. This is my very first time trying one of their beers. And the Norwegian side is from Amundsen Brewery, who are from Oslo. And this is my second encounter with them. My last beer that I reviewed from these guys was pretty damn good. So looking forward to this one. These guys, of course, are really well or really easy easily recognisable because of the artwork on their cans. So I'm definitely looking forward to having a go at this beer and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on it. It's good to have my first go at an, a beer from Against the Grain as well because I've heard a lot about that brewery but just never actually been able to try any other beers. So it should be hopefully be an interesting review. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here. If you want to get straight to the tasting of course, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website. It's the link to my other reviews that I've done from Amundsen Brewery before. No doubt I will return to them in the near future. There's a link down there as well that will take you to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Against the Grain Brewery. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers, like I said. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there both for my Norwegian reviews and another one for my American reviews. Those are constantly being added to, of course, and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like me to check out. It's always great to hear from you guys and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. As I've said before, you guys that are actually watching the channel are a really bloody good source of information so don't hesitate to get in touch. It's always lovely to hear from you. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Amundsen Brewery then. So as I've told you before, Amundsen Brewery are based in Oslo in Norway and this brewery is part of the Akerhus Group which owns a number of bar and restaurants around Oslo. But the main men in this parent company are Ole Johan Tolofsson, Bori Jensen and Tom Eric Andreessen. But the first brewery for Amundsen was part of a gastropub in Stortingsgatan and this was actually a very very small operation and the key man for getting this established was Tom Alfred Oimo who'd actually been a home brewer for a number of years. But the brewery expanded in 2015 and they were producing around 200,000 litres of beer per year and they'd become quite established within Norway having opened up a larger brewery in the Neudalen district of the city. In 2016 though the parent company purchased a property company that was called Halketa Eindam and with this they acquired the, the property at Björner Divine number 14 in the Halkito district in the southern part of Oslo. This was turned into a 3,500 square metre brewery and their brewing began there in late 2016 and the new brewery has a capacity of around 1 million litres of beer per year so this is why you're starting to see the Amundsen cans becoming a lot more readily available. But the brewery equipment came from Braucon in Germany and the canning line apparently came from Italy and the total investment in this new site was actually 16 million Norwegian kroner so a really uh, quite hefty the investment there but the managing director of this company is Jeffrey Janssen van Vuren and Matthew Thomas and John Hudson are the others involved in the daily running of the brewery and the artwork on the cans is apparently designed by the American John de Villiers or Peter John de Villiers I'm sorry about that so yeah as I was saying these cans that you get from Amazon very very distinctive and uh, they are starting to become a lot more readily available mainly because they have moved to that uh, to that new brewery in Neudalen but if you want to read a little bit more about Amundsen check out the website it has links to all the different restaurants and things that the Akahus group actually own and you can see pictures of it and everything there's a really nice little website with all the menu and things there so hopefully when I do make it up to Oslo I can actually go and visit this brewery because it would be really really cool so anyway on to against the grain brewery then as I said to you this is the very first time I'm encountering this brewery let me just bring up my notes on these guys so yeah against the grain brewery are based in Louisville in Kentucky and they were founded back in 2011 so the four men behind the company are Sam Cruz uh, Jerry Nagy uh, Adam Watson and also Andrew Ott and the company started off as a brew pub in Louisville but they've actually moved their beers their brew beers proved to be very very popular so they had to actually buy a new production facility in the Por Portland district of the city and this is now where they produce the majority of their beers so Jerry was the original head brewer of the company and he worked at Bluegrass Brewing Company and Sam Cruz was a home brewer who apparently used to badger Jerry for ingredients before one day actually asking if he could help and that was that. He started off washing out kegs and then later went on to become the assistant brewer but they were later joined by Adam who filled Sam's previous role of the keg cleaner and then Andrew was apparently a server in the brewery and he'd asked the three if they'd thought about starting their own brewery and he looked at their business plan and said they needed a little bit more input on the restaurant side of things and the three guys liked him uh, they thought he had some 
something to offer and uh, they knew he pulled his weight so they invited him to come on board with their venture. So apparently Jerry had been thinking about starting his own brewery for a period of time but he got a call from someone who asked him to look at a property for a restaurant that had just closed down and he told the landlord uh, the landlord his concept for a brewery and quickly put together a business plan and this landlord actually offered them the property but they rejected the space because they said they couldn't really do what they wanted to do in it but this really set the wheels in motion for them then and in later later on in January 2011 they actually started actively looking for places and in July they purchased what is now their brew pub and this place used to be called Brownies but apparently it was a bit of a sinking ship when they kind of came in and they purchased all the equipment they bought the place on July 29th apparently and actually had it opened up and ready to brew on the 4th of October and over the last few years like I said they've been continually expanding their capacity and they've become a really popular Kentucky brewery probably one of the best known from the state of Kentucky from what I gather and I think they're employing something like 75 people now so that gives you some idea of just how much these guys have expanded and I think uh, I've not actually seen many of their beers across here in uh, in Scotland or over in Sweden and Denmark actually for that matter when I've been over there so I need to keep an eye on maybe Shios in Copenhagen is a brewer is a, a beer shop that's likely to get a hold of them if any of you actually watching do know where I can get some of the against the grain beers that would be really good to know but they've got a nice core range there if you have a look at their website again you can read a little bit more about them and you can also have a look at their core beers and things like that but they seem like a really really nice brewery and uh, you should definitely check them out so yeah that's all i've got to say about against the grain brewery as i say both brewery websites are in the video description below and you can have a little read about those further if you want but let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer itself so yeah this one is the hoptropolis and it comes in at nine percent so double ipa this one so it should be a really quite nice beer as i say that um peter jean de villiers artwork on this is really really nice so the hops in this beer are magnum mosaic and equicot, equinot and it's got a malt base of pilsner and wheat malts with some flaked oats in there and the yeast strain is a vermont yeast as well so i think this one is kind of going to be like a, a new england style double ipa but it looks really really nice two very good breweries involved in this one it says on the side here so against the grain so who actually started this who planted the first seed and did they ever imagine a once bustling metropolis overgrown with their creation controlled hop fields but now a distant memory uh, the hop vines are trying to overpower and show their dominance in the food chain the only way to fight back is is to brew more beer that contains more hops and this is us doing our part to save humanity a double dry hopped ipa jam-packed with massive amounts of lupulin bitter sticky hop love hitting you in the face with a slap of dankness hoptropolis pairs best with new friends and good vibes so yeah nicely presented this one as i say i really like the artwork on these almonds and cans you can see this one actually took a little bit of a dent goddamn Ryanair of course when I was bringing this back from from Denmark but um yeah it should be nice and I actually learned something about it. it's indie thanks to it was indie kid UK one of my subscribers who told me about this I was commenting on this on my last video about this uh this lid where you could um you could it was take it off and you can actually sip it out the can apparently this is called an open mic and I should have a I was told that I should have a taste of the beer before just when I open it up and then pour the rest into the glass so we're going to do that this time so let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then so yeah there we are there's our open mic and, I sh and as I said I should have a little sip of the beer before I actually get it out yeah I can see exactly why he was telling me to do that. So let's get it out and into the glass. I can tell you right away, this is a pretty nice beer. So yeah, as you can see, and as you would expect from a double IPA, this one's poured a really nice kind of pale golden yellow colour this one. It's not quite an orange colour, it's definitely more of a yellow. There's a solid finger or so of a frothy white head on this one, some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little bits of sediment just sitting at the bottom of the... Uh, of the glass there and one or two bigger bubbles kind of sitting on the side there and going up towards the bottom of that head but you know it looks really nice it looks pretty much exactly uh, as you would expect a sort of new england ipa type beer to look it's pretty much exactly as you would expect as i can see as a pardon me my brain is not working in this video so if i put my fingers behind the glass you can see that it's not really transparent it's more of a hazy beer rather than anything else but it looks really nice and pretty much what you'd expect from the double ipa style so let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on Ooh, I have to say that smells pretty nice. So yeah, with this one, there's a little bit of a tangerine orange. That'll be from the mosaic. I always find the mosaic, as I've told you many a time, it gives you a lighter, kind of juicier tangerine rather than the oily orange that you would expect from the Amarillo or the Pacifica hop from New Zealand. There's a bit of a limey character in there as well. That's the Equinot. The, lime, the Equinot always gives you a kind of, it can give you a little bit of orange, but I always find it gives you a sort of limey, kind of papaya type thing. And there's a good bit 
of a spicy floral note to this one. It's not going to blow your head off in terms of the hoppy aromas, by the way. It leans more towards the juicy side of things. So in terms of the, the kind of floral and grassy notes, those are there but they are not the most prominent part of the beer. It does lean a little bit more towards the juicy side of things. And I think within that, the tangerines are a little bit more prominent than the limey notes that you'd expect from the Equinox. But if you take it in a little bit more deeply, waft it like this, the chemistry waft, you can smell some of the nice oaty, sort of bready characteristics out of the beer. That little bit of that oaty sweetness is coming out, some of the biscuity notes, and a little bit of that smoother, kind of wheaty, bready quality is there as well. So in terms of the aroma of an IP, it's not the most, it's, it's a good aroma, it's not too pungent, and it's quite kind of straight down the line. A little bit of juicy fruit, a wee bit of, uh, or quite a bit of juicy fruit, I would say, actually, in this one, but a little bit of that kind of floral, grassy type thing, and then some nice biscuity and uh, oaty kind of malts coming out of it. So it does smell nice, as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of it before you get stuck in. But let's have a go at this one now. So this one's the Hot Tropolis, a double IPA at 9% ABV, a collaboration brew between Amundsen Brewery from Oslo in Norway and Against the Green Brewery from Louisville over in Kentucky in America. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, Skull, cheers. I have to say that's pretty nice. I do like it just when you get these New England IPAs and uh, they just they just work out, they just come across as really nice, smooth, smooth beers and they've done a good job with this, I have to say that. So I'll just say straight up, uh, a thumbs up to both Amundsen and Against the Grain for this one it is pretty nice actually. So as I always say, sugar the beer around your palate and just let your whole mouth adjust to it before you start thinking about the flavour too much. So yeah, with this one, I would say it's it, the malt base is really nice. First off, it's a little bit lighter actually, not quite as creamy as you might expect from some New England IPAs, but you can feel a little bit of that wheaty, bready character going right across the middle of your palate. Underneath that, you can actually feel the lighter kind of Pilsner malt. And as the flavour mellows out, I think in the middle, if you go down the middle line of your tongue, a little bit of the kind of biscuity flavour from that starts to come out, which is quite nice. Yeah, and in the middle of your palate, you've almost got like a little bit of a circle. And that's where these nice, smooth, oaty qualities come out of the beer. The oats, I find, have just got a little bit of an almost sweet character to them. But everything in this beer goes together uh, really quite nicely. I like I like how it just, it kind of slots together like that. But it's got a nice kind of boozy quality to it in the background. You can feel this is a slightly heavier beer, and I do like that, actually. So the malt base is quite simple. It is kind of what you would expect from a New England IPA. In terms of the hoppy side of the beer, though, there's a little bit of earthiness in the back corners of the palate. You can feel that just sitting there, and it gives you a little bit of bitterness. But as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, there's a nice, slightly spicy floral aromatic note in that. A lot of the spiciness that will come out of this beer will be from the Magnum. The Magnum gives you this nice uh, kind of spicy note. It's a really good bittering hop, that, actually. And as you go round the front curve of the palate, you just get a little bit of that kind of lighter, kind of grassy note. And that grassy note builds a good bridge with the Equinot hop. You're getting some of the nice limey flavours coming out of this. And maybe a little bit of a sort of uh, papaya note coming out of the beer a wee bit later on, which is quite nice. But yeah, as I always say, if you just go behind the front curve of your tongue... That's where you get this little oily bubble where the nice juicy fruity esters start to come out. And for me, this one has, um, it's almost got a little bit of a kind of grapefruity base to it. But then on top of that, you start to get the tangerine oranges from the, the mosaic. And then you've got a good kind of limey quality. The oranges, the tangerine notes and the lime are kind of mixing together quite well. And as you progress further into the aftertaste, it kind of evolves a little bit into this sort of melony flavour. That's another thing you can get from the Equinox sometimes. I always find it with some of these hops, it depends what you've got in the malt base as to what fruits you get. Of course, you can use Columbus, for example, in a lot of these dark beers like Imperial Stouts and things, and they bring out the nice red fruity character. It's all, it's all about how these different chemicals interact, basically. The chemistry of beer really is quite fascinating, but I would say that because I was, I, you know, my undergrad master's was a chemist, uh, was chemistry, and now I'm into astrophysics and spectroscopy and all of this kind of thing. But the chemistry that goes on in beers really is quite fascinating. And of course, if you're a bit of a, the whole thing for me with beer is the foodiness, but I love how all these chemicals kind of go together but in this one 
you are getting a nice little bit of a sort of melony quality coming out of the, the Equinox, which is really cool. And there's a little bit of a, papa a papaya flavour, sorry, in the aftertaste as well. It's interesting just how the fruitiness of this beer kind of evolves as you go. I like how everything in this beer is going together. I do hope they continue to produce this because it is actually really quite nice. So if you haven't had a chance to have a go at this beer already, I would recommend that you do. I'm not sure if it's a limited edition one or if it's uh, one that they are going to produce regularly, but I hope they do it regularly because it has proved to be really quite good. And one of my uh, long-term Norwegian subscribers, Silent Witness, he was saying that, this, that these guys are producing some really good stuff at the moment. And uh, hopefully, as I say, hopefully I can review a few more of their beers for you in the fairly near future. But I think it's it's a very good kind of straight up double IPA. This one, the tangerine notes, the limey quality, the melon that comes out of it, the fruity notes in this one, I think are what make this beer quite unique. Um, so in terms of the uh, the mouthfeel then, I would say this one's mid-bodied. Carbonation is pretty smooth on this. It leans a little bit towards the oily side of things. This one has a little bit of a kind of creamy flavour to it, or a creamy mouthfeel rather, which is quite interesting. There's a good bit of hoppy bitterness, some juicy fruits in there as well, and there's a little bit of sweetness from the malt base as well. But overall, it's a really nice beer. All the flavours kind of go together quite well, and I think the unique part of this one is just the way the Equinot hop comes out. The, the mosaic is pretty straight up. You do get a little bit of pineapple up, actually in the aftertaste from the mosaic as well, which makes these really interestingly with the melon so I think the fruity qualities that come out of this beer are really quite nice and that um, malt base that it has is quite interesting as well the Pilsner malt just starting to push its way through the oats as well but overall it's a really good double IPA have a go at it this one's all about how the flavours go together but like I say the unique point is uh, just how these kind of fruity flavours come out so I think that's a good way to kind of sum this review up so I hope you've enjoyed my take on this beer once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff do let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favourite beers are both from Amundsen and from against the game, the Green Brewery as well. Um, they've both got some really interesting things, so it'd be interesting to know what your favourites are, particularly from against the Green, because as I say, this was my first encounter with them. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon. The Hoptropolis Double IPA, a collaboration between Amundsen Brewery from Oslo in Norway and against the Green Brewery from Louisville in Kentucky. A really, really nice beer with some really interesting fruity characters. Until the next time, it's Landry's now, and I will catch you guys very soon. Skull, cheers.